تیرے دل میں گر نہ تھا آشو بے غم کا حوصلہ تو نے پھر کیوں کی تھی میری غم گساری ہائے ہائے شر میں رسوائی سے جا چھپنا نقاب خاک میں ارے ختم ہے الفت کی تجھ پہ پرتداری ہائے ہائے عمر بھر کا تو نے پیمانے وفا باندھا تو کیا عمر کو بھی تو نہیں ہے پائیداری ہائے ہائے خاک میں نامو سے پیمانے محبت مل گئی اٹھ گئی دنیا سے راہ و رسم یاری ہائے ہائے I loved Sara. She was my friend. She became my teacher. We came from polar opposites in terms of our professions. I in medicine, driven by passion, in a field driven by reason. Sara in literature, driven by reason, in a field driven by passion. I would swoon over beauty and she would take its measure. I would wax poetic about the vastness of desire in the great Gatsby and she would calmly point out how Daisy tumbled short of Gatsby's dreams not through her own fault but because of the immeasurable potency, the colossal vitality of his desire. She maintained that desire would be negated if it were fulfilled. The lover would cease to be the lover and the beloved annihilated. She appreciated this Ghalib Ghazal because it celebrated the loss of the revelry associated with amorous encounters. The only consolation here, she points out, is that the rage of loneliness is its own curious company. Muddat hui hai yaar ko mehma kiye huye Joshe qada se bazm chiraga kiye huye اور پھر وضع احتیاط سے گھٹنے لگا ہے دم برسوں ہوئے ہیں چاک گریباں کیے ہوئے پھر جی میں ہے کہ در پہ کسی کے پڑے رہیں سر زیر بارے منت درباں کیے ہوئے اور جی ڈھونتا ہے پھر وہی فرصت کے رات دن بیٹھے رہیں تصور جانا کیے ہوئے in November of 2020, one evening during the lockdown, we were talking on the phone about the dreams when Sara said to me, remember when Caliban in The Tempest has that gorgeous speech that begins with, do not be afraid, the aisle is full of noises and then ends with, that when I waked, I cried to dream again. As she said, this is the nature of dreams. Freud calls it dream works. It's essentially a problem of temporality. How do you remember Harvey? Or how do I remember Austin? It is not time bound. It places a distance, a different slant to the idea of is one remembering or inventing? Or does memory also belong to the future? or as she called it, proleptic nostalgia. And even though Sara and I had worked hard for a year and a half to translate just 21 of Ghalib's ghazals, 14 years after our first stab at this one, suddenly she made me see new meaning in it. Hai ghaib ghaib, jis ko samajhte hai hum shahood. Hai khwaab mein hanoz jo jaage hai khwaab mein. The deep decorum of the hidden is misread as revelation. The clairvoyant lost in dreams, dreams that he is awake. The poet represents himself first as being engulfed in dreams and then delicately redefines his psychic location as that of one who is awake within a dream. Within this liminal state, he is both able to observe that which remains hidden and express his reconciliation with the darkness that he perceives around him. After we were done, 
interpreting this ghazal, I was feeling good about the day's work. I asked Sara how she felt. She looked askance with that impish look. As I think we use the word exquisite too many times. <laughs> Sara had a wicked sense of humor and was hysterically funny. Once she drove down to New York so we could attend the annual Edward Said Memorial where Noam Chomsky was to speak. It was a packed auditorium at Columbia University, but thanks to Mayim Said, we had front row seats. Our friend Arjun Apadurai called and asked me to save a seat for him. When he arrived, Arjun turned to me and said, Asra, do you mind taking the middle seat? I hear better from this year. Of course, I said, and moved to the middle seat. Sara turned to me and calmly pronounced, well, as how fortunate you are. You are now seated between two good ears. <laughs> After four decades on the East Coast, Sara moved to Bellingham, a quaint little town in Washington State to be close to her beloved Tilak across the border in Vancouver. I had not seen her since the start of the pandemic, but we spoke regularly on the phone. Conversations were always amazing, intellectually stimulating, and so much fun. But COVID isolation had done a number on her. She was slipping faster than we had imagined. In the last few months, shortness of breath, despite the oxygen, made it impossible for her to speak for more than a few minutes. Besides, she was in constant physical pain. At last, I did the unthinkable and broached the hospice and palliative care options with her. She asked me what would happen if she stopped eating. I said she would not live beyond, beyond nine or ten days. She said she would speak to Tilat about it. Then she asked me to come and see her. I did. I did not waste any time. I cancelled all my engagements and booked my flights immediately. My sister Sora, who has an apartment in the same building as Sarah when she lived in Boston, accompanied me. We met in Seattle, stayed overnight, rented a car and drove to Bellingham. It was a long journey. Tilat met us there. Sarah was excited and happy to see us and we had a wonderful day together. She was energized and talked more and more as the day went on, feasting on crispy pagodas that she had tilak fry. The afternoon we were coming back, I was overcome with grief, knowing I would never see that cherished face again. I became practically catatonic. She noticed my heartbreak and with eyes shining with mischief, started singing, Chup chup bethe ho zurur koi baat hai. When I could only respond with tears in my eyes, she somehow rallied her secret resources to sit up. Staring deep down in my eyes, she imperiously commanded, Acha az, now. No long faces around me, please. That is the quintessential Sara we knew. That is the Sara we loved. <coughs> so let me end with something she would be pleased with. You see, when we were writing the Ghalib book back in 2005 and 6, after our day's work was done, we would migrate to the porch of my home on Serene Lake Quinn Sigamond in Massachusetts, sipping our evening tea. Sarah would then become dreamy, relaxed, pensive, always beautiful. She would close her eyes and ask me to recite poetry. Her joy in the rhythm, the sounds, the words was palpable. So I will now recite something which she loved. A short piece from the 33rd canto of Dante's Paradiso, which is about love, followed by something in Urdu, which is all about what happens 
when desire vanishes. Just like the dreamer after he awakens, still stirred by the feelings the dream evoked but cannot bring the rest of it to mind, such am I. The vision almost faded from my mind, but in my heart there still endures a sweetness that was born of it. Thus the sun unseals an imprint in the snow, thus in the wind upon the weightless leaves the Sibyl's messages are lost. O light exalted beyond mortal thought, grant that in my mind I see once again but one small part of how you then appeared, and grant my tongue sufficient power sufficient glory that I can leave a single spark of glory for people yet to come. For if you return but briefly to my mind and then you resound but softly in these lines, the more your victory shall be conceived. I have seen that the love of love is that the love of God 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 میری چاہ نے چاہا کہ بتلاؤں اسے دل کیسے جلا کرتے ہیں اور لوگوں زمانے کو بھی دکھلاؤں کہ لوگوں یہ کہا سچ ہے کہ آتا ہے کیا اپنے ہی آگے انہیں دیکھو یہ کبھی ہم کو ستاتے تھے جلاتے تھے رولاتے تھے کڑھاتے تھے نہ آتے تھے نہ جاتے تھے مہینوں صفت شمع جلاتے تھے کبھی آنکھ چوراتے تھے کبھی مو کو چھپاتے تھے بڑا روب جماتے تھے اور اب ایسا ہے کہ میں ان کو ستاتا ہوں رولاتا ہوں جلاتا ہوں کڑھاتا ہوں نہ آتا ہوں نہ جاتا ہوں مہینوں سے سفت شمع جلاتا ہوں کبھی آنکھ چوراتا ہوں کبھی مو کو چھپاتا ہوں بڑا روب جماتا ہوں عجب الٹا تماشا ہے انہیں ہو گئی الفت مجھے نفرت انہیں حسرت مجھے حیرت مجھے آتی ہے ہسی اور انہیں رونا وہ میرے عشق میں ہستے روتے ہیں میں ہستا ہوں وہ وفاؤں کے طلبگار میں اس لفظ سے بیزار انہیں چاہ کا ارمان مجھے ظلم کی خواہش انہیں اس طرح ستاؤں مجھے جس طرح ستایا انہیں اس طرح رولاؤں مجھے جس طرح رولایا جو کروں آنے کا وعدہ تو مہینوں نہ ہو پورا جو ہو پورا بھی تو کیسے کہ ملوں مل کے ستاؤں قلق و رنج بڑھاؤں جو وہ کچھ کہنے کو ہو میں تو کہوں رہنے دو فرصت نہیں سننے کی سنو بھی تو اس کان سے اس کان اڑا دوں وہ کہیں بہر خدا رحم کرو ہم سے مصیبت نہیں اٹھتی کرو تم یاد وہ گھڑیاں جب میرے عشق میں تم رہتے تھے گریاں یہ ستم کیا ہے کہ محبوب سے رہتے ہو کشیدہ ہو کبیدہ نہ محبت میں اثر ہے نہ دعاوں کی فکر ہے جو ادھر حال تھا پہلے وہی اب حال ادھر ہے وہی اب سینہ سپر ہے جو بنا پھرتا تھا قاتل جو کیا کرتا تھا غمزے یہ عجب رنگ محبت ہے کہ پہلے جو تھا ہستا وہ ہے روتا جو تھا روتا وہ ہے ہستا